What is going on everybody? Weedle to Needle here and we are back again with some more VGC 2018. What's up? That's gonna be my new slogan for VGC battles. Not Smogun. Smogun battles kinda have me bored. So bored. Anyways, today we are using an Ion Deluge team and half of you guys are probably like, what is an Ion Deluge? Is that a new Fortnite item? No, nope. it's not. It is a garbage move that turns all normal type moves into electric type, wow, so it's pretty nice. much useless. Aww. But Shaniko is going to find a way to make it useful. We're using Ion Deluge on Zepstrika. As you can see from my opponent's team, she's bringing a pure cancer, but this is the battle spot ladder. Allow me to be your guide. She's packing the Mega Kangaskhan, the Moonduck Cunt, the Lander is thick, and Paper Mario. Mario. So this is gonna be a pretty rough matchup for your homegirl Shaniqua to deal with, but let's just hop right into the games. Alrighty, our first opponent, Davida, is wearing the Lorantis Lady Gaga outfit. You gotta love it. I guess it's better than the fuckboy Komodo outfit, so that's something. I lead off with my Mega Baina and Azumarill, as my opponent's gonna be leading off with Cresselia and the Mega Kangaskhan. And we're gonna frisk here and see the Cresselia's holding the Wiki Berry, which is fine. And I'm pretty sure my opponent's gonna wanna target my Azumarill with the Fake Out, just because Belladrome Azumarill is such a monster to deal with. But spoilers, I am not packing a Belladrome Azumarill. My Azumarill set is very, very heat. So I'm going to Mega Evolve my Mega Baynut alongside the Mega Kangaskhan just because I need to get my Mega Evolution off just to use this strategy correctly. So Mega Baynut's going to Mega Evolve here and my opponent's going to go for the Fake Out targeting into the Azumarill. Pretty obvious, but that's just a given because Belly Drum Ozzy is a huge issue. I'm going to be going for the Skill Swap into my Azumarill just because I want the huge power on Mega Bayonet, since Mega Bayonet has base 165 attack, doubling that attack stat is very, very threatening to deal with. And now my Azumarill is at half HP, but now my opponent's gonna have to redirect the aggro at this Mega Bayonet, and that's exactly what I want. My opponent's gonna go for Helping Hand. I go for the Prankster Encore. Why? Into Kangaskhan. Lock that bitch into Fake Out. Gotcha, Beautifully bitch. done. I'm gonna go for the knockoff into Cresselia with huge power, and Cresselia is somehow able to live that shit like. Huh? How is it even possible? But Cresselia is just so fat, it, it, it's not too surprising. Now my opponent's gonna bring a lander is thick here Josh. to get the intimidate on my bayonet because now that my bayonet has huge power, it is a massive threat or a huge threat, I guess you could say. So we're going to tackle the uh, lander is D on the switching because I figured my opponent was going to switch out of the lander is there. I could have went for encore into Cresselia, but I wanted to just hit whatever switching and with the, you know help I can knock off, and that does do so much damage to Kangaskhan or to the lander is D rather. And we didn't even knock off an item, so that tells me that the Kangaskhan's probably Z move. Yes. So I'm gonna go for my own helping hand here. Trying to shadow sneak this Lander's T. And my opponent goes for the ally switch, clicks the win button, so he's able to switch places with Lander's T to absorb the shadow sneak, which is really unfortunate because I really want to knock out the Lander's T before I can knock out my Mega Bayonet. But down goes Cresselia, and now my opponent's going to be able to go for the uh, ground Z move, so that pretty much means my Mega Bayonet is dead. But that's honestly what I want because the strategy revolves around a Zoomerel, not the Mega Bayonet, which is pretty funny because you would think that skill swap. Mega Baynut, you would really just want to take advantage of the huge power, and I did, right? Don't get me wrong, but the strategy revolves around Azumarill having Prankster. So, Mega Baynut dying is exactly what I want. So, down goes Mega Baynut, that's perfectly fine with me, and now my opponent. I'm gonna bring in Zep Striker here because this is part of the Ion Deluge meme. My opponent's gonna bring in the Kangaskhan, and since I did show Prankster Encore, I'm 99% sure my opponent's not gonna go for the fake out. So I'm gonna go for my Z move with my Zep Striker. And you may be wondering, oh, he's just gonna electric Z move the Kangaskhan. We're going to Z move, get plus one special attack, go for the Z Ion Deluge which is going to turn all normal type moves into electric. So I'm going to go for the Prankster Tickle, targeting into the Kangaskhan, but since Lightning Rod, you know, turns, or since Ion Deluge turns all moves into electric, we're going to absorb that with Lightning Rod. My opponent goes for a double edge, we're able to absorb that with the Lightning Rod ability. And now my opponent's in the Rock Slide, we're going to skillfully dodge that with our Zep Strika. And Rock Slide's not going to be doing too much damage to Azumarill, because Azumarill's very, very bulky. And now I'm going to go for the Prankster Soak into the Kangaskhan, change that shit, into a water type, and now I'm gonna be able to go for the plus three Thunderbolt and demolish this Kangaskhan 
overkill him with a crit as well. They probably would have killed five King of Scans. Down goes the Mega King of Scan. It's not Landry's team, running up for rocks. So we're going to dodge it again. Zep Striker just dodging moves left and right. Azumarill is very low in health, but we're going to eat the Fair and Balance Pinch Fairy, which is used on every single Pokemon in VGC unless you are a Mega Evolution or a Z move user. My opponent's going to bring in the Kartana here. And if my opponent wants to go for Protect, that's fine. I did show Prankster Encore, so I know my opponent's likely not going to go for Protect in this situation. I go for my own Protect here, and I'm going to go for the Tickle against the Kartana, just because I want to make sure this Kartana cannot one-shot my Zepstrika, because Zepstrika is literally my Link Condition at this point. So we're going to guard ourselves against the Leaf Blade and Rock Slide, as my opponent does not want to go for Earthquake, because he doesn't want to target his own Pokemon. And if he goes for Protect with his own Pokemon and goes for the Earthquake, I get his Encore him into it the next turn. So it's just pretty unfortunate for him. Him to face against a prankster Azumarill. But my opponent's gonna go for the Leaf Blade here. He's actually faster than me because I am a mod as up striker. I should have definitely used a Timmons up striker in this team, but I wanted the extra power, okay? And I also have Tailwind on this team, so I didn't think I'd need Tim in Nature, but Tim in Nature actually uh, would have helped me out a lot in these battles, as you'll see. But Rock Slide going to bring me down really low. If my opponent connected one of those two Rock Slides, I'm pretty sure I would have died. But the striker. No, shh, it's okay. We want some Strika to shine, okay? So it needs any luck it can get against a cancerous team like this. So we're going to activate the electric search here with my Tapu Koko. Tapu Koko is my cancerous Pokemon on this team, I apologize. But you need a terrain control on all teams unless you want to automatically lose to Tapu Lele. So yeah, we kind of need terrain control. So my opponent's going to go for Rock Slide here. We're going to guard ourselves with Protect. And the electric terrain is going to increase my electric type damage even more. My opponent's going to go for the Protect here with his Kartana because my Encore user did switch out, so he has no reason not to go for it. However, we're going to discharge here, target into my own sub strike and get another Lightning Rod boost. So that's our third Lightning Rod boost of the game. I'm going to go for the Hidden Power Ice just for Landorus Thix. Down goes Landorus T. Fuck that Pokemon. Down goes Landorus Thick. And my opponent's last is the Kartana. On top of Coco does outspeed the shit. I just go for the Ion Deluge, which is a priority move, by the way. Ion Deluge is a priority move. And I'm gonna go for the Sky Drop here, targeting into Kartana, just because I wanted to see if Kartana could be Sky Dropped, and I figured it could just because it's a piece of paper. So I'm gonna go for the Sky Drop here and knock out the Kartana. And that is going to be the end of the battle. We're able to defeat my opponent with Ion Deluge memes, which is absolutely fantastic. Great job, Zeb Striker. It was a really nice showing of Ion Deluge in that battle. Already, my second second opponent today, Connor VGC, has a very threatening team fitting the stereotype of VGC players who bet VGC and their trainer name or their showdown name. They're always tryhards. Not that being a tryhard is a bad thing at all, that's not a bad thing. My opponent has a Gastrodon and I have no grass type moves on this team and Soak does not work against Gastrodon because of Storm Drain, so Gastrodon is going to solo my team. So how is Shaniqua going to combat Gastrodon? My opponent's also wearing the Fuck by Kamo outfit and he also had Kamo on his team, but since I had Azumarill on top of Coco, it kind of deterred him from bringing Kamo, thankfully. So I lead off with um Zep Strika and my Noivern as my opponent is up with the Gastrodon and Incineroar. We're going to Frisk and see he has the Aguab Berry and the Figgy Bear. So double pinch bear on my opponent's side is going to intimidate my Noivern and intimidate my Zep Strika. I also just realized I have double Frisk on this team, but Frisk is a very handy ability to have, so I can't really complain. I'm going to protect my Zep Strika turn one, expect my opponent to want to go for Earth Power into it, as he actually targets the Zep Strika with fake out, so didn't really expect that, but I'm not complaining. I'm going to go for the switcheroo into Gastron. Which item are we going to give Gastron, you may be asking. We're going to give him a ring target, which if you guys didn't know what ring target does, um, it removes all of your um, immunities, so Gastron is no longer immune to electric type moves with its ground typing. So that pretty much means we can hit this thing with Thunderbolt now, which is really huge because if I wasn't able to get off this switcheroo plus ring target combo, uh, this Gastron would just solo my team, which is very scary. My opponent actually knows what ring target does. He's going to switch out and bring in the top of Lele. I'm kind of impressed my opponent knew what ring target did because um, it's an item no one uses ever, or no one uses trick plus ring target combo. That's just like never before seen. But I'm going to go for Thunderbolt. Targeting the Lele does do you know very little damage. And now I'm going to go for the Tailwind here to get off some speed control because my team desperately needs it against the uh, Exelgar top of Lele, which my opponent likely had in the back. My opponent's going to go for a knockoff, as thankfully we do have the Z Crystal, so we're able to live that pretty comfortably. And now I'm going to switch out of my Noivern and bring in my Silvali Electric Form. Yes, we are using a Silvali on this team. I'm going to protect my uh, Zep Striker here just because it's pretty obvious, I know, but I don't want to be taking a Psychic from the top of Lele, so we're able to guard ourselves from the Psychic. And my opponent's going to go for a knockoff turreting into a Noivern slot, but since we are Silvali, our uh, Electric Memory cannot be knocked off. And now my Zep Striker is going to go for the Electric Z move. So are we going for Gigable Havoc? 
or are we going for Ion Deluge? We are going for the Ion Deluge this turn, so we're going to go for Z Ion Deluge and make it so all normal type moves turn to electric. Now, which normal type move am I going to be using to take advantage of that? We're going for Explosion, which turns into an electric type move, so it's 250 base power stab from Adam and Silvali. We're going to absorb it thanks to Lightning Rod, and this should just obliterate Incineroar on top of Layla. Let's see. Top of Layla goes down, but the Incineroar is very bulky. The Furry Wrestler lives. It is the most used Pokemon on VGC for a reason. Down goes Top of Lele, and now he's going to consume his Figgy Berry and get all of the health back. Those Pinch Berries are so demoralizing, and now Flare Blitz is going to obliterate my poor Zepstrika. And the Pokemon, the focus of the team is going to go down, so that puts me in a severe disadvantage considering all I have left is Tapu Koko and Noiburn. So I'm going to send out my Tapu Koko here to remove the uh, Psychic Terrain, and we're also going to send in our Noivern here. My opponent on the double down is going to bring in the Excelgor. Now a really weird interaction happens here that I'm going to try to explain, but someone can tell me if I'm wrong. So we're going to activate the Electric Surge before my opponent's able to get off the Psychic Seed. And since um, Excelgor has a higher base speed than me, I'm assuming that's because of the Tailwind, which allowed Electric Surge to activate before a Psychic Seed. Though I have no idea if that's why that happened. But here, a funny interaction, like an even more funny interaction happened. So Discharge is going to paralyze my Noivern. and it's going to paralyze the Excelgor. And it's going to paralyze the Incineroar. So we got a 30% chance on all three targets. And we're going to be able to consume the uh, Aguad Berry we stole from Gastron as well. So that actually came in handy. And we're going to get paralyzed here, which kind of sucks, as the Oxalgor uh, is going to proceed to go for final gambit here, targeting into my top of Koko because we got the discharge off. We're able to live, thankfully. And down goes the Oxalgor. And thankfully, my opponent also gets paralyzed. So we get some justice there from paralyzing myself and getting fully paralyzed. The Tailwind's going to peter out here, as now my opponent's going to bring in his last the Gastron yet again. But because he's holding the rain target, we can now hit him with the uh, discharge. So. Gonna go for Discharge. My Noivern does not have Protect, unfortunately, so I can't protect myself from Discharge. Gonna have another team building mishap, but my team building is very awful. Gonna go for Discharge plus Boom Burst combo, as thankfully Incineroar is gonna go down, but my Tapu Koko is gonna get crit, and down goes Tapu Koko as well, which is kind of unfortunate. I may have been able to live that, but unsure. Down goes the Incineroar, and my opponent thankfully goes for the Earth Power instead of Icy Wind, so now it comes down to if Noivern doesn't get paralyzed here, and thankfully we do not get paralyzed, and Boom Burst will knock out the Gastron, and my support. Um, Noivern's able to clutch the battle out in the end, and we're able to defeat Connor VGC with a very narrow victory. Alrighty, my third opponent today has a really cool team this time round. Having fun in VGC? Those words. Is it possible to use them in a sentence together like that? But yeah, my opponent's team, you can tell he has the Water Compaction plus Water Shirk in combination with Smeargle and Palace and the Clefairy's there for redirection support. But the Regice is what made me scratch my head. I had no idea what the Regice wanted to do. My opponent actually had a really high rating for my standards. He, I think he was 1741, and I may be a few points off, but his rating was in the 1700s, so I was kind of afraid of my opponent because he's using a fun team and his rating's high, so you already know this guy's pretty skilled at the game. So I get off my Banat Frisk and see he has the weakness policy. And and Focus Sash, so that's to be expected. Going to Mega Evolve with my Mega Bayonet, I'm gonna try to go for the Skill Swap turn one because just going for Skill Swap gives me the huge power and gives the Azumarill the uh, Prankster ability. So he's gonna go for Fake Out targeting the Azumarill because Azumarill is always the Pokemon they target down with Fake Out because of Belly Drone, which is such a massive threat. Um, my opponent's gonna go for the Amnesia here as he Fakes Out and flinches my uh, Azumarill, so that was a nice play on his part. And uh, now I can't Encore, I'm gonna lock him into Fake Out. I was targeting down the uh, Palisand or the Smeargle with Encore. I think it was Smeargle because I knew the Fake Out was coming, or the Water Shuriken. Now I try to go for the Encore into Smeargle, but unfortunately Water Shuriken is a priority move and Smeargle has a higher speed stat than me, so he's able to uh, get the Weakness Policy with Water Shuriken and then keep getting the Water Compaction because you get Water Compaction every time you hit by a Water type move. So he's going to get plus six defense. He's at plus two special defense thanks to Amnesia, plus two special attack and then plus two attack which doesn't really help him all that much. I tried to hit him with the Shadow Sneak with huge power trying to knock him out before we got the water compaction but the Smeargle was too fast and I encored the wrong target. I should have freaking encored the uh, palace in there. That was such a bad play but uh, oh my god that made me so sad because now he's able to knock on my Bayonet with Shadow Ball and my Mega Bayonet was like the only way I was going to be able to kill this palace in comfortably so I uh, misplayed around this Palosan really badly. Like, I played 
like booty Let's in this go. battle. It actually hurts to watch back, but it's all in hindsight. You know, hindsight's 2020. I didn't have this kind of knowledge when I was in the battle. I was kind of like scared because like I had no idea what my opponent was gonna do with the Reggie Ice, but I go for Protect You with my Zep Strike, just guarding myself from the Earth Power. I go for the Soak, targeting into the Palace Hand, trying to make it a Water type so I can actually kill it with Electric type moves. My opponent's gonna go for the Earth Power, able to get that read correctly. And now Reggie Ice is in here, so. I know I can knock this thing out with the Helping Hand plus Electric Z move, and then my the Reggie Ice cannot psych up. My opponent has Protect on the Palace Hand, which is very devastating, because now I'm going to have to try to kill this uh, Palace Hand with Zep Strike up behind Protect, and since Protects uh, make you take 25% damage from Z moves, uh, I don't think I'm going to be doing too much damage here with the Gigable Havoc, even though it is Stab and all. I mean, <laughs> the Palace Hand's at plus T special defense and behind Protect, so this Gigable Havoc, unfortunately is not going to be doing much damage at all, so he's able to live that very comfortably, and my opponent is going to be able to go for the psych up targeting his palace sand, and that is just devastating. Oh my god. So here I go for the encore, targeting into palace sand. This was another huge choke. I should have encored the Reggie guys. What was I thinking guys? What was I actually thinking? The Palestine was not the problem here. It was definitely the Regius at this point because he goes for Thunder here. I could have also Encored him in the Thunder here. What am I freaking doing? Okay, so he Thunders, locks himself in the Thunder, he goes for Protect, it fails because I Encored him into it. And now I can Encore the Regius into Thunder and make him just stuck stamming Thunder because of the Encore loop. So my opponent's going to bring in the Smiggle here. He's going to Protect to guard himself against the Encore. So that was well played, though I had the opportunity to Encore him last turn and I didn't take it. So he's going to guard himself with Protect and I'm going to go for Thunderbolts targeting the Palace and try to knock him out, but he brings in Smeargle, gonna live with the Focus Ash, and now I can Encore the Reggie Ice into Protect, so it's not that big of a deal. My opponent uh, does realize that the Encore is incoming, so my opponent's going to target down my Azumarill with the Fake Out, nicely done by my opponent, and I'm gonna go for Thunderbolt targeting into the uh, Smeargle, trying to knock him out, but uh, I can't really do damage to the Reggie Ice at plus two speed depth, so that's my best bet. And now my opponent's gonna miss Blizzard, which is kind of unfortunate, though he's using Blizzard for some reason as opposed to like Icy Run or Ice Beam, so kind of confused on that. But now my opponent's gonna bring Clefairy, which is gonna make the Reggie Ice take even less damage because of Friend Guard, and he's gonna go for the Follow Me, so I can't even, you know, Encore the Reggie Ice and the Blizzard even if I wanted to. I go for the Ion Deluge, because I'm trying. I don't even know why I did this, to be honest. I'm pretty sure I just thought the game was over, so I go for the Ion Deluge and the Tickle, trying to give my Sub Striker the boost, but because of follow me, the uh, tickle does not get you know redirected in the Substrika, so we do not get the lightning rod boost. So that was kind of confusing, but I'm pretty sure we didn't get the lightning rod boost because of uh, the follow me. But Substrika is going to get destroyed by Blizzard as we do dodge the Blizzard with my Azumarill. I'm going to bring in Top of Coco, and I was kind of confused why my opponent did have the uh, Blizzard and Thunder with the uh, Reggie Ice, though it's all going to make sense this turn. My opponent's going to go for the Protect here with his uh, Reggie Ice. I just go for the Soak, targeting Reggie Ice so he protects himself, and I'm gonna go for the Dazzling Gleam as well, because I didn't want to discharge my own Zoom roll this turn. Dazzling Gleam's not gonna do jack squat to the Uncle Fairy, and he's gonna go for the Gravity now, so he has Gravity, so he can't miss Blizzard or Thunder now, and I can't even touch this Reggie Ice to save my freaking life. He's gonna go for Follow Me, just to be on the safe side, because if I got the water typing on the Reggie Ice, like, it may have taken, like, 20% for my discharge as opposed to, like, 10%, so that would have been scary. I'm gonna go for the discharge here. It, it, it didn't even take the Reggie Ice, didn't even take damage there. We're going to crit our own Azumarill. Down goes Azu, and at this point, we're going to get freaking Blizzard. Blizzard. Blizzard it is, yes. And Tapu Coco is gonna go down, and we're gonna get freaking body burned by our Reggie Ice. <laughs> that was painful, but that was a fun way to lose, so I can't even get mad. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that main battle, but let's move on to the next game. Alright, my fourth opponent, Moon, actually has a pretty cool team. He has Volcarona, Mega Metagross, Tapu Coco, and Alolan Persian, which is Pokemon you don't really see all that much in VGC outside of, like, Mega Metagross and Coco, so kind of curious to see what Volcarona wants to do. It could be, like, a Rage Powder set, or it could be a Quiver Dance set. My opponent is up with the Persian and the Tapu Coco. Go, as I decide to lead off with my Azumarill and my Mega Binet yet again, because I wanted to get that skill swap combo off, like, and you know, the previous game, though unfortunately I played the previous game so badly, <laughs> it kind of hurt, but I'm gonna frisk and see he has Dark EMZ and Life Orb, so I know that the Persian is the Z-Mover, likely Z-Parting Shot. I'm gonna switch out my Mega Binet immediately, because I'm not trying to take a Thunderbolt with my Azumarill, so I'm gonna bring in my Zep Striker here. My Azu does not have Protect. My opponent's gonna go for Fake Out into Azu. They always target Azu with Fake Out, because Azumarill is such a big threat. We're able to absorb 
up the Thunder. I don't know why he has Thunder instead of Thunderbolt. Maybe the uh, our lone Persian has Rain Dance. I'm not too sure. But we're going to get Flinch too, which is unfortunate. And now I'm going to switch onto my Azumarill here and bring in my Silvalia Electric form. I was going to bring Noivern in this battle, but I felt like Silvalia Electric form was more useful. Um, I didn't bring Tapu Koko because my opponent had his own Tapu Koko. And literally the only reason why I have Tapu Koko on this team is to power up my Electric type moves. But since my opponent has his own Tapu Koko, I don't have to worry about that. So he's going to go for Dazzling Gleam, targeting both my Pokemon. We're going to guard ourselves against the Parting Shot so my opponent doesn't get Switch Initiative. And now I'm going to take a Dazzling Gleam here, but we should be able to live both my Pokemon pretty comfortably as thankfully we're able to live. And uh, now my opponent's going to go for Parting Shot, targeting into my Zepstrika because the Zepstrika looks like a bigger threat right now, I guess. So he's going to Parting Shot, lower my stats a little bit. My opponent's going to Parting Shot out and bring in the Metagross. So in comes Shiny Metagross. Shiny Metagross looks super sick. And I'm going to go for the Hidden Power Ice expecting Landers to come in because my opponent did have a Landers T on his team, but he didn't bring it in this battle, which is really weird because I have like 14 electric types on this team, but he just didn't bring Landers. Like, I, I don't know why, but I'm not complaining. So I go for Tailwind there. I was trying, I felt like I would explain why I went for HP Ice into the uh, Persian slot as opposed to uh, going for the electric move, but it might, the opponent's going to Mega Evolve with the Metagross here. And at this point, I'm going to go for the Ion Deluge. You guys already know why I'm going for Ion Deluge. Since Electric Terrain is up, we're going to get Stab Electric Terrain Boosted Explosion. 250 base power. How much damage is this Pokemon going to take? Let's see. So we're going to get the Lightning Rod Boost. What's up, Strike? And not bad, not bad. We got our Tailwind up. Explosion's going to straight up knock out Mega Metagross and Tapu Koko. So we got two KOs with Slavalia Electric Form. And we got a Lightning Rod Boost. Mm, absolutely beautiful. I was going to go for the Z Iron Village there, but I felt like keeping my Electric Z move just for damage was just a better call. I'm going to bring in my Mega Baynot here, so my opponent's going to bring in the Alone Persian, and my opponent is going to bring in the uh, Volcarona. So we still have a few turns of Tailwind left, so I should be able just to Z move this Volcarona and kill. We're going to frisk and see as a Mago Berry, which is one of those pinch berries like the Agua Figgy Wiki Berry, so. We're going to Mega Evolve here with my Mega Beta. I can't really skill swap this turn against my own Zep Striker, though I could if I won Lightning Rod. I don't, I don't really need it, and Frank's here is not going to help my Zep Striker very much, so I'm just going to retain my uh, Mega Benet's uh, ability this turn. We're going to Protect here as my opponent's going to go for Fake Out, targeting into the Zep Striker. I guess that's the bigger threat in Watch Terrain. Going to go for the Knockoff, targeting into both Corona. As we do a nice chunk of damage, though, unfortunately, we do get the Flame Body Bird, which kind of ruins any sort of plans I had for skill swapping huge power onto the uh, Mega Benet. My opponent's going to go for Quick dance here, which is pretty scary, but since we're behind Tailwind, we should be able to outspeed both Corona next turn, and I'm pretty sure my opponent knows this, because he was in the 1600s, so I'm assuming my opponent has somewhat of a brain, so this is going to influence my next turn's move, so I'm expecting my opponent to want to go for Protect with his Volcarona, stop my last turn on Tailwind so we can just win with Heat Waves Pan, so I bring in my Azumarill here to switch into Skill Swap. My opponent does go for the Protect, so it's a very nice read on my part. I'm going to go for the Skill Swap, targeting into my Azu, so... We're gonna, get, we're gonna be able to go for skill swap. We do have the pranks, just if my opponent had foul play, we would have been able to go before the Persian, but he has Snarl instead of foul play, so I guess that's fine. He's gonna lower my special attack with Mega Bayonet, which doesn't matter, because we are physical, of course. And now my Azumarill has the prankster, and this is exactly what I was looking for. The Tailwind's gonna peter out. However, the Volker Pro just went for Protect, so we're gonna go for the Encore. Why? Targeting Volker Verona, locking him into Protect. Absolutely wonderful. And now my opponent's gonna go for Snarl yet again. It's not gonna be doing too much damage to my team. My Benet doesn't appreciate it, but Benet's burned anyway, so it's pretty much dead weight at this point. Uh, we're going to get our special attack lower. Not a big deal, not a big deal. We're gonna go for the Gunk Shot here. We're actually able to connect miraculously enough. Gunk Shot's gonna be able to do a big chunk of damage to a Lone Persian, considering we're burned. And, uh, and he has Fur Coat. That's some pretty good damage. We also get the lucky 30% chance to poison, though. I guess it's the same chance as Scald, so. I mean, this charge got like three paras like a few battles ago, so I guess it's not too surprising. But since the Volcarona is locked in to protect, I can just go for Helping Hand here and go for the uh, Shadow Sneak. I'm just going to be forced to go for Protect because he's locked into the uh, Protect, like I said earlier. I'm going to go for the uh, Shadow Sneak with Helping Hand, but because we are burned, doesn't do any damage at all. And now the Persian's just going to knock out my Mega Bayonet with the Snarl, but that's fine with me. We got the Prankster off with the Zoom Roll, and that was the only reason why I went for Skill Swap with Mega Bayonet to begin with in this game, because that was how I was going to stop the Volcarona from sweeping my ass. So down goes the Mega Bayonet here. And I'm just going to be able to bring in my Zep Striker, and we should be able to live one attack from Persian, though if we don't, uh, he'll just die from poison regardless, and he is locked into the, uh, locked into the, whatchamacallit, locked into Protect. I tried to go for Soak against Persian, forgetting about Dark-types being immune to, uh, 
prankster move, so whoops. I kind of forgot my Azura had prankster in that situation, so I kind of made a mistake. But Thunderbolt will be able to knock out Persian anyway, so down goes Persian. And from here, I can just soak the bulk of Rona or just lock him into Encore. Get him in the Encore loop, so his, protect or his Encore is going to end, but I'm not going to hesitate to go for Encore again, so we're just going to Encore him back into Protect. The Encore loop is real. Prankster Encore is so annoying to deal with in BGC, especially with a Pokemon like Azumarill that has an incredible defensive typing and defensive stats. I'm just going to go for the Electric Z of the Volcarona because I just want to knock this guy out this turn. So we're going to get cloaked in the Z Aura and we're just going to go for the uh, Gigavol Havoc here. And that should be the end of Volcarona unless the minus one special attack really just makes us that weak. But we are modest nature just to compensate for the slight like a power that the strike it has because it's strike a special attack stat I believe is base 80 or 85. So it's like really, really low, but he's going to protect and the Gigavol Havoc just does no damage because it protects. So whoops, kind of forgot about that, but he's just going to forfeit because he was locked into uh, protect so no reason to keep battling so that was a good game against moon the uh, prankster encore at the end was very very clutch and i'm glad we were able to clutch out that game with the zoom row but let's move on to the last battle all right my last opponent today looks like he's packing a trick room team with the common core of mimi lax yes stack attacker for your secondary trick room reviews your and mega camera ups which kind of gives my team the raw dicking okay, but hey it is camera ups it's kind of cool to see camera ups make an appearance in three of my videos in a row so camera up this new landers tea of my videos but let's hop into this battle against christopher I did decide to lead off with my uh, Azumarill right. Mega Banette yet again. This is usually the lead I lead off with because getting the Prankster up with Azumarill is very important for the Prankster Soaks and the Prankster Encore. So he's going to lead off with Mimi Lax. I lead off with my Azumarill and my Banette. We're going to first see as Figgy Berry and as Mimikyu doesn't have an item. Uh, that's kind of weird. <laughs> I didn't realize that. I just realized that now he didn't have an item at all. I was like, what was Mimikyu's item? I didn't know that in the battle, but I just realized he just didn't have an item at all. So that's awkward. I'm going to go for the skill swap here with my uh, Mega Bayonet because, you know, got to get that huge power and got to get that Prankster. So I'm going to go for the Tickle here, just targeting into the uh, Snorlax. I want to lower that shit's defense a little bit as my opponent is going to go for the belly drum here with the Snorlax, so that's fine with me because I could just lock him in the belly drum, no problemo. And the Mimikyu can't really do too much to me. He could Shadow Claw and Mega Bayonet, though I doubt that'll Oko me unless he's like Life Orb or something, though we just found out he has no items. So my opponent's gonna be able to go for the Trick Room here, which is fine with me. And I am a huge power with my Mega Bayonet now, so I have a lot of raw damage. Just gonna go for the Encore. Why? Targeting the Snorlax. I may have targeted the Mimikyu there if I wasn't afraid of the Mental Herb, but since he just doesn't have an item, I guess I have nothing to be afraid of. But I go for Shadow Sneak here just to break this thing's disguise because Mimikyu is annoying as shit. No one likes Mimikyu, so we're going to uh, get rid of his disguise. My opponent is locking the Belly Drum here because of the Prankster Encore, and he's gonna go for the Psych Up, targeting his own Snorlax just to get that plus six attack. That's very scary for me to deal with. However, we have the Prankster Encore, so I can just lock him into Psych Up and not be afraid at all. My opponent's gonna pull a hard switch and do the Shiny Camera Up. So Shiny Camera Up makes a debut in three of my videos in a row. So Shiny Camera Up in three of my battles in a row. Not bad, not bad. So we're gonna Encore the Mimikyu, lock him into Psych Up. So he's gonna Psych Up my uh, Mega Beta and just remove all those attack boosts he got from the uh, Snorlax. Gonna go for the knockoff here, predicting him to switch out, but he brings in Camera Up, and since he is Mega Camera Up, the knockoff does not one shot, but considering it was only like a base 65 power knockoff and it did that much damage to max HP camera up, that's very impressive. Huge power Mega Banette is so powerful. My opponent's gonna Mega Evolve, but the Mega Camera up, and Shadow Sneak will be able to obliterate this thing, so I'm not too afraid of that. So my opponent's gonna Mega Evolve with the Camera up, and I'm just gonna go for the uh, Shadow Sneak. I'm actually going to Tickle here. Why did I Tickle? Oh, I Tickle Stack Attack. I expect my opponent to switch out against him for the Tickle. Fair enough. And now I'm gonna go for the Shadow Sneak here and knock out the uh, camera out. I was originally going to put Parish Song on this Azumarill as opposed to Tickle just so I can get the uh, Lightning Rod uh, Parish Song combo, but unfortunately, Huge Power and Parish Song aren't compatible with each other and you can't use a uh, Parish Song Azumarill on the VGC ladder because I guess it's not a Gen 7 move, so whoops. I really showed on slide I couldn't, so I never bothered trying to get a Parish Song Azumarill, so I'm going to go for the Shadow Sneak here. With helping him, trying to knock out the stack attack, and look at how much damage that did! Stack attack has base like 200 defense, and it just took so much damage. Like, Jarbo's gonna one-shot me, yeah, that's fine, that was Mega Bayonet, but that's what I want. The idea with that Mega Bayonet is to force people to draw its aggro into it, because huge part of Mega Bayonet has so much offensive pressure, unless you have like 18 Incineroars, so... My opponent's gonna go for the return here, targeting my Azumarill, as Azumarill doesn't really give a shit. The Trick Room is going to wear off here, so now I'm gonna be able to bring in my Zepstrika, 
and from here I can just target down this uh, stack attack up but instead I go for the electric Z move because honestly I wanted to repeat what happened in game one where the uh, Kang is coming for double edge and we got the lightning rod boost so I'm gonna go for the Z Ion Deluge yet again because that's what I want to do we're gonna get the uh, normal type moves turning into electric. I go for the tickle, we're going to draw it with the lightning rod, and we're going to get the free lightning rod boost. And I hope my opponent doesn't go for stomping tantrum, he just goes for return. As thankfully it does, we're gonna get a second lightning rod boost. Absolutely wonderful. So now we have plus three special attack because of Z Ion Deluge. My opponent's gonna go for the rock slide. I wanted to go for trick room there so I can encore him into it, but my opponent's smarter than that. The Prankster Encore has so much freaking pressure, it's hilarious. I love Prankster Encore. <laughs> but I'm gonna go for the So Cure targeting Snorlax because the stack attack is gonna die from Life Orb next turn, so we're just gonna go for the Thunderbolt with plus two special attack targeting into Snorlax. And this is going to obliterate that Snorlax. Down goes the fat Snorlax. And my opponent's gonna go for the Rock Slide here. This should be able to knock out my uh, Zoom Rail, but we're able to live. We're both able to live because of the spread move. The stack attack is gonna go down as, as opposed to my Azu, my Azu and my Zepstrika. We're going to consume our Grab Bear and get all of our health back. Absolutely wonderful. And my opponent's last Mon is the Mimikyu. And yeah, there's not much my opponent can do because I can just go for the uh, Soak into Thunderbolt and just win this game. So this battle was really fast paced. I obliterated like, mm, I gave him the clap. The easy clap, so Thunderbolt's going to knock out the Mimikyu, and that's going to be the end of this battle. We're able to win this battle pretty convincingly with the freaking Ion Deluge strats. Incredible, man. This team is such a meme, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this very long video featuring Ion Deluge Upstrika and the Skill Swap Azu combination, which was really cool. I didn't expect it to do that much work, honestly. I didn't expect Mega Bayonet to do that much work either, because normally people just like focus it down, or at least on Showdown they do, but uh, on Wi-Fi they just target on Azumarill Zoom to begin with, and then they target down Mega Bayonet, which is exactly what I want, because we get a few tacks off the Mega Bayonet if we can, and then we have the Prankster Azu to you know pressure people into you know locking them into Protect, locking them into Trick Room, locking them into Table, and locking them into Setup Moves. Prankster Encore is just so versatile, and since you are a Fairy type, Dark Times aren't typically an issue, and people don't really send them out against Azu anyway, so. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, longer video featuring I Under Lose Up Striker. If you guys enjoyed this uh, longer video and really want to support my channel, let me know by leaving a thumbs up on the video as it really helps on my channel a lot more than you realize. Keeps me motivated to put out these uploads for you guys and it's always appreciated. Anyways, the question of the day is going to be, I should have probably made note of this earlier on in the video, but I uh, recorded this battle video with the black lines enabled. Now, normally I record with the black lines disabled so if you guys couldn't tell the black lines being disabled makes the pokemon pop out more and look a little more cartoony-ish where the black lines just give them outlines and makes them not blend in with the background so my question is would you guys prefer if i keep the black lines enabled like they are in this video or should i keep them disabled like they have been in pretty much all of my previous ultra sun and wi-fi battles let me know in the comments down below what you guys would rather see the uh, no lines patch being enabled like they were in all my previous videos or should I keep the uh, lines enabled like they are in this video? Like, what do you think looks better? The no lines patch or the lines being enabled? Let me know in the comments down below what you prefer. It's pretty easy. I don't really have much input to say because I think they both look good in their own way. I think the uh, no lines patch makes Pokemon pop out more and look a bit more cartoonish and colorful where the lines patch actually gives them like an outline and it makes some things look better like the trainers. But uh, that's just my input. Let me know in the comments down below what you prefer to see, the No Lines patch or the Lines patch. But that's going to be the question of the day. Thank you guys so much for watching till the end of this long ass video. If you guys have watched till this point, be sure to comment that Weedle's Needle is the best female PokeTuber. But that's going to be the question of the day. Thank you guys so much for watching till the end of the video. I will check you guys next time. <laughs>